What is going on gamers? This is Mori here with AGN and today we are going to be discussing the strategy guide for the Consumed King's Garden. So that's right. So this one actually is a very short map and the boss fight can be fairly quick if you know what you're doing. In it you're going to find an Estus Shard, some Titanite Chunk, a Ring of Sacrifice, um, the Shadow Armor, a Dark Gem, Titanite Chunk, Dragon Scale Ring, a Titanite Chunk, Path of the Dragon Gesture, and then two Titanite Scales. You can also get the Wood Grain Ring in a plus one game, and the Sage Ring in a game plus two, and then you can get the Magic Stone Plate Ring on the Consume King's Knife. The final boss is going to be Osiris, the Consume King. So starting off here, you can see that we have some Consume Knights. These guys can be kind of tricky. The trick is to trick them into making a, a heavy attack and getting behind them because they are vulnerable after they make that heavy attack. As you can see, if you get caught inside of a inside of their blast radius, you are going to take some serious damage. They can be tough opponents. They're shielded, so forward attacks on them really don't work. You have to bait them into an attack and then take advantage upon that and you know seize the seize the opportunity that they present in making themselves vulnerable. Now we're going to be going down a lift and we're going to be going down into a lift into the actual garden itself. If we turn right at the bottom of the stairs here, it's pretty hard to miss, is going to be your Estus Shard for this area. So be sure to grab that so you can get some more of that delicious Sunny D at the same price. Now, going down here, there's going to be an Abyss Beast that you'll see spawn below and a little ledge you can drop onto with an item that is going to be Titanite Chunk, which is going to be very helpful. You need that. Now, as you can see, you can avoid that thing altogether, or you can choose to kill it for the Ember Shard, for the Ember, not the Ember Shard, the Ember that it is most likely going to drop. We choose to ignore this, and there is going to be Poison Mist here, so by going right, you can avoid that altogether, and we can make our way towards the shortcut. See, as we get to the top of the stairs, there's going to be another Consume Knight. As you can see, my buddy takes advantage of that backstabs it we get a few slices in and then I make the mistake of not getting away fast enough and I get caught but again while I'm taking that if you have a friend they can do another backstab and you can get this guy down fairly quickly if you're playing it by yourself you're gonna have to be more cautious and you're gonna have to bait them into those long attacks like I stated and then get the backstabs in when you can moving forward from this point we are going to make our way deeper into the garden Going up the steps, you can see I ran past a few items here because I'm just trying to make this quick for you guys. This area isn't too large, and if you want to fully explore it, you're going to be able to, and you're going to be able to find everything that it is that you need. And I highly doubt that you'll be, that you'll really miss anything. This is more of just a preview video to show you exactly what you can expect in this area and how to get the shortcut and how to defeat the final boss, King Osiris himself. So he's going to be the consumed king. Now, as we work our way down... There's going to be some arrows being shot at you from up above, and there's going to be an item over here on the body, which is Titanite Scale. Again, something very useful for upgrading your, your weapons and game. Um, these things can be a little bit of a bitch to deal with. What I tend to like to do is keep them, them at range. Attacking them I found with like axes or anything short range is just so risky because they're incredibly fast. Up here, there was another knight, I believe, and we're going to find another item for another titanite chunk. All right, going forward, you see here is the door. This door right here is the door that leads to the shortcut. So this is like the area that you originally came into. And from here, it makes it a lot more simpler to get to the boss because you can just completely avoid all of the other all of the other enemies like the Abyss Beast and all those knights all together when you're coming in for this final battle. Moving down now, we are actually going to be making our way to the boss himself. And on the way there, it's not going to be too long of a run from this point forward. We're going to encounter another couple knights and a few other things along the way, but nothing major. This area is actually pretty cool when you look at it. I really like the aesthetics of it. I like how it looks. I like the consume garden, how it looks abandoned and a little bit feral, wild. And it just, it's, you know, the atmosphere of these games is really what makes them fun, aside from their outrageous difficulty and just the, the stress involved in dying repeatedly without purpose. But that being said, you can see there's the dragon scale ring that we have discussed earlier that is right there that you find. And moving forward, we're going to encounter another couple knights. Now here's a tricky part right here, because there's two of them. You want to pull each of them individually, so go left first into that little corner by the stairs. See this? Pull, pull them left, and one will come out on its own. 
and now try to stay in this left area if you can. I know it can be difficult, but if you attract both of them, you're going to have a rough time. These guys will box you in and you will get injured like really bad. So try to stay in this area. Try to do the best you can not to go past the middle section of the stairs because you will come with an eye view and you will die. As you can see, even just fighting one of these guys with two of us, I lost a significant portion of my health there by getting boxed in the side of the wall. Don't be me. Don't make my mistakes. Listen to my words, not what I do. That being said, we are now ready to go aggro the second night that will be up there. And with this one, you know, just make quick work of them. If you have a buddy, it's going to be a little bit easier. But if not, like I said, just be very careful in debating him into long attacks and then getting behind him for those backstabs. We're trying to just basically run through this really quick so I don't have to bore you with a with a ton of with a ton of gameplay while you're trying to see what it is you're supposed to be doing. So with that being said, just take this guy out as quickly as possible. But, you know, be, go forward fast fast slow you know don't 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 go fast fast go fast slow take your time so with this guy being dead we are now about ready to get to the final boss part and you'll get the magic stone plate ring so moving forward out of the spot where the second knight was that is where you're going to be heading next and as you can see, what I'm going to do here just to make this a little bit faster is I'm going to make sure that I don't have a matchmaking password on because I'll summon one other person just so you guys don't have to sit through this whole boss fight here. So with that being said, we're going to be moving forward into the Consume King himself. So Cyros is a, is a boss that is actually kind of easy to do once you get his mechanic down. He's not incredibly difficult in stage one. Stage two, he becomes a little bit more crazy to deal with, depending on how you approach the fight or what type of class or build your character is. For this, I believe that his, I don't know what his resistances are exactly, but I know that he you can do physical damage to him. So anything that is physical damage base is going to put out decent damage output on him. He basically starts the fight with just a couple of basic bitch attacks. His staff will come out and really fast. It comes out really fast. So you got to dodge it early if he pulls his staff arm, if he pulls his staff arm back. The tail whip takes a little bit longer for the animation to follow through. So that's an attack you need to be patient with. You need to hold your dodge until the very last minute of that tail attack and then use that to get some forward momentum and still have time to damage the boss. You need to put some distance between yourself and a Cyrus if he, if he leaps up into the air because he will pound the ground at an area effect. That move deals not a whole lot of damage, but it interrupts whatever you're doing, so you can't just trade blows with him. This the Consume King also has poisonous breath that he will just blurt out. So you got to run away very quickly if you see this happening. Um, this prevents you from being able to take poison damage throughout the fight. And it also helps you be able to see things clearly because you won't be able to see things that good inside of the poison mist inside of stage two he actually deals a little bit more damage. And as you can see, he abandons his staff altogether for very vicious, unpredictable, close range attacks. He does close the distance very well, so he's going to rush at you. This is something that you have to take, you know, take into consideration. The single claw swipe isn't too bad, and its timing is, is very, very similar to the staff bash in stage one. But instead, it's his charging forward, his closing of the distance that you really have to be precautious about. Osiris races towards you on all of his legs, clawing through anything that gets in his way. You have to dodge repeatedly until you get to the side and out of harm's way. You still have to watch the tail, but it's really not too much of an issue in this in this stage of the game. Use it as a way to dodge closer to the boss like we did earlier and gain some free hits. When you can, try to get as many head attacks as possible. They're risky, but enough damage will actually stun him, allowing you to heal and allowing you to recuperate from those attacks. Once you have defeated this guy... It's, there's going to be a bonfire as usual, and you can explore a small area behind the boss's lair. It doesn't really lead to any new area, well, not directly at least, but there are a few secrets to uncover. If you open the door behind Osiris's room and descend, at the end of the tunnel, you're going to see a serpent-looking guy, which is a lesser form of Dragonkin. You'll encounter many more of them on Arc Dragon Peak, but this one, you can kill it pretty easily. The corpse on the floor teaches you the path of the dragon gesture. A chest behind that serpent man that we just talked about contains some more titanite scale as well. And the wall behind the rear chest is a, well, quote unquote, secret door. So you got to slash the wall to open it or double roll towards it to open it. After this, 
you finished the King's Garden. You can return to Lothric Castle and go on King clearing it, or you can advance straight ahead into the untended gardens located behind the secret door in this room. Also, I would like to notice that the Path of the Dragon gesture has some pretty serious importance. With it, you can access an optional region of the game, the Arc Dragon Peak. So if you return to, um, to the Erythral Dungeon and go to the spot where you found the Dragon Torso statue, so you can stand next to the Dragon statue in that spot and use the Path of the Dragon gesture. Well, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more great Dink Souls 3 content, give my channel a sub. It would be really appreciate it and help me out a lot. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.